July was a pretty amazing month for the stock market with the S&P up 3%. You can't really beat that. Um, Tesla found its way to 299 plus, 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 not quite to 300 during the month, but then it got hammered in that huge tech blow off where they also added to their woes that they would have had that day anyway by having a uh, a so-so call after the earnings report. Well, August is the last month. It's one of the worst months um, uh, because of vacations. So lots of folks going on vacation. And so you have a slowdown in trading, you have a slowdown in interest. Uh, and so typically it is not a great month for the stock market. Um, I'm thinking that I'm changing my predictions just a little bit. I'll let you know later what I, what I'm thinking and why. All right. This is Randy Kirk. Please hit like if you like the morning show and uh, please hit subscribe and notify. And of course, Patreon right now, you can get a free copy, any one of the books uh, on Audible, not just a, not just a, a, a Kindle or a, uh, you get the Audible version for free when you sign up. Already people are doing that. And I've had a couple of people sign up with $10 because I'll give you two Audibles if you sign up on the $10 version. Okay, let's go on and take a look here. Okay, the market is slightly up this morning. Uh, tech about flat, some up, some down. Tesla already bouncing around between up one and down one. Um, so yeah, that's kind of, maybe August has already started as you'll hear in a couple of minutes. So I'm sure you've already noticed this too. There's been a, a huge uptick the last week in bad press for Tesla and for Elon Musk. Uh, in fact, you can't hardly find any Elon Musk uh, headlines, except that they relate to Twitter. Uh, no, nothing about Starlink, nothing about uh, you know, uh, uh, the Starship, nothing nothing about Tesla. It's almost all about Twitter right now. Because why? Because they can get, you know, uh, if it bleeds, it leads. They want negative stuff about Elon or negative stuff about Tesla. And that's what you've been getting. Because why? Because this is a slow time for news. They need to get eyeballs and Tesla and Elon Musk get eyeballs. And so how could a headline is never uh, Stellantis is uh, doing horrible. It's Tesla competitor Stellantis is doing horrible. Have you noticed that? Okay, that's because those keywords kill it. Those are the ways that you can get eyeballs and that's what the press is doing right now. Watch for that to continue all through August. Once we get into September, the news cycle picks up dramatically again and you will see, maybe you'll start seeing even positive articles about Tesla again. Um, okay, well, this is one of the, again, one of the slowest months of the year for trading. Uh, uh, less activity, less interest. Uh, so uh, even I would think you would expect maybe even less specific trading of stocks uh, as opposed to uh, index trading. Um, so um, uh, I, there's a lot of uncertainty right now, which is adding to this. Uh, so I'm starting to think that August could be one of those months. Um, the uncertainty is so palpable um, you may remember three, if you follow this channel about three months ago, I was saying that there was this a massive amount of uncertainty among the, econ the economists, the pundit class, et cetera. They were all like, oh my gosh, we don't know what's going to happen. It, it was, there was anxiety associated with it though. There was a lot of, oh, what's, what's happening here? We don't know what to do. Um, and, and the headlines were showing it. And if you got into the body copy, you really saw this anxiety associated with such a confusing time, such a hard, such a difficult time to figure out which way the market's going to go. Well, that anxiety has gone away, but the confusion has not. Elon Musk even said last a uh, couple of weeks ago during the earnings call, he says, "I don't know. This is a weird economy. I don't know how to how to call it." Well, maybe that was partially because he called it so completely wrong. He said we were definitely going to have a significant recession. That recession never developed, and so you know. It, it would be obvious. You would say, I don't know. Well, you know, Elon always gets into the into the meat. He usually goes deep, deep, deep. I wonder if he hasn't gone deep, deep, deep in understanding recessions and evaluating recessions. That's something I've done. I've written a book on the subject. And uh, uh, this recession is completely different as every recession is completely different. The nine that I've studied, they couldn't be more different. Sometimes it's the money supply. Sometimes it's the economy, you know, people just stop buying. 
Uh, sometimes it is an international event. Sometimes it's a brand new law. The George Bush II uh, recession in the early 90s was almost 100% because there was a new law passed. Sometimes it's because there's a financial situation that nobody expected, uh, 2008. So each recession is so completely different. How about the COVID recession? So um, yeah, uh, you need to study them and you need to understand them just like everything else. His history, as they say now, the, the new the new muse on history is it doesn't repeat, it rhymes. Well, I, I can I, I can kind of buy into that. So this particular situation right now that we're in, there's no recession coming. I will repeat it again. I'm not confused. I'm not so I'm not surprised. I am not uh I haven't really changed my overall uh prediction in the seven months that you may have been watching this particular show. But there is not going to be a recession, there's not going to be a soft landing, uh, there's not going to be a hard landing, there's going to be no landing. We are going to continue up. The market is strong, labor is strong, people have jobs, it's not going to be a problem. And now we're showing you know, a, a new era, new things are changing. If you didn't watch last night, you should watch last night. What we're seeing is productivity improving. That's the expectation this week when the productivity numbers come out. Productivity improving means inflation going down. Productivity improving me means people, people get wealthy. The stock market gets wealthy. Everybody gets wealthy when productivity improves. So that's what I'm anticipating. That's what Kathy Wood is anticipating. No change in that part of my analysis. All right, so, but I'm but I am seeing this calm attitude out there. A, a, a calm about the fact that people don't know what's going on. Usually when there's uncertainty, people are not calm, but right now they are. So what's going to happen in August? Well, I think the economy is going to do fine. Inflation going down, stock market, second leg of the bull, all that continues, continues. Tesla up, up, up but August might see a pullback. Why? Okay, oil keeps going up. It's now at 81 and climbing. One prediction has oil going to at least 85 and possibly even higher, maybe on to 90. That is not good. It will reverberate through the economy and it will affect stocks. Bond yields keep going up. They're flat this morning, but they keep going up. Uh, if, it, if the 10-year bond yield breaks through four and continues to go up, that is not going to be a good sign. Uh, trueflation this morning uh, is that we have two weeks now on trueflation staying flat. One of the things that was predicted that I didn't go along with was that infl the last mile, the la it's going to be hard to get that last mile uh, on, the, on the inflation curve down under 2% from under 3%. Getting that last 1% is going to be hard. I'm still saying no, that's not going to be hard. We will continue to see the trueflation thing go down uh, below 2%. Why? Because of productivity. Uh, the market wants to see positive economic direction, and they're getting that from the earnings report. Over 80% are positive. Uh, they're beating their numbers, even though they're, the, the, the overall beats are not great and the overall earnings are not great, but they are beats. And so that's, I think that's what's creating the calm, is that the big companies seem to be okay. They seem to have okay balance sheets, no real crisis there. Uh, even the banks have recovered and things are doing okay in the banking sector. Uh, we'll see again tomorrow. I'll be reporting on this uh, unique report that only comes out quarterly on how are the banks doing and how is lending doing. I'll be reporting on that tomorrow morning. Meanwhile, Ford has been hit with big a big downgrade. Ford is basically admitting that they are in trouble. Uh, they're starting to talk about their new hybrids that are coming out. They're talking about the fact that they're pushing back their numbers once again with regard to EVs. They're just not making it in EV space. Well, they're doing fine with their ICE cars, but that isn't the future. And so we got to go back to Elon Musk's number one principle of business. I believe this, if you ask him, this is his number one principle of all business. If you don't make a compelling product at a compelling price, you should not be in business. The big three so far in the United States are not making compelling products at compelling prices. Volkswagen, a little bit. Audi, a little bit. Uh, Kia, Kia and Hyundai, a little bit. And the, some of the Chinese makers, a little bit. They are making some compelling products at compelling prices, but not enough. It hasn't happened yet. Uh, they're going to have to get they're going to have to get going quickly. I'm going to now make a prediction that you will know. We will all know by the end of 2024 who the winners and losers are going to be. 
How's that for a prediction? I think because I've said, I continue to say, there won't be any uh, ICE cars made after 2027. Well, if you haven't figured it out by the beginning of 2025, if you don't have a lineup that's starting to look compelling and is starting to sell real numbers that's getting into mass production by the end of 2024, I don't think you're going to be a player in 2027 when it's 100% BEV. All right, well... That's my that's my thinking right now. Okay, one headline today is Stellantis might be the one who make who makes it. I started making that prediction three months ago. I thought Ford had a shot. I'm beginning to wonder if they do. I haven't gone deep, deep, deep into each of these car companies. I probably won't. I don't know if I have time to go that deep into every one of the car companies. But my rough estimate right now is Stellantis might be the one with the best chance. A little better balance sheet, a little more... Uh, profitability margins. Um, Jeep is still a strong brand. Uh, Ram is a strong brand. Anyway, uh, Stellantis might be the one. Uh, all right. So I continue to, uh, I, I, I hope I haven't repeated myself. August is going to be a flat month, almost certainly. Sure, news could change that. Otherwise, after a 3% run in July, I think we'll see the S&P flat, maybe even the uh, NASDAQ flat. I think there could be a pullback and recovery all in the month of August. So you could see some kind of a 10 or 20% pullback. And then you might see that 100%, all that 10 or 20% recovered during the month of August, or maybe not, maybe a pullback and no recovery, or maybe just flat. Uh, it's a little hard to you know call all that activity, but I'm tending to think pullback and recovery. For Tesla, I think they will continue this March towards 300 regardless of what the NASDAQ does, regardless of what the market does, because it's now in its own world. Um, and I think that's how it'll be traded. So I think it, it'll get close to, or it will hit 300. But now I'm beginning to think in August, at least no breakthrough, unless there is a giga catalyst, <laughs> my new word, unless there is a giga catalyst. Did you look at my giga catalyst list, my other 10? So now there's 20 giga catalysts. If you didn't see them, they're up on Patreon. Of course, you can go back and look at the videos as well. I'll put a, uh, I'll, I will put a card for the giga catalyst, the second uh, 10 that I did yesterday. Um, all right, here's, let's take a look at what's happening in the market right now. Let's take a quick look. So Tesla, can, well, Tesla's now down to uh, the overall uh, all the uh, the market now, the NASDAQ is down a little bit. Um, the uh, the big cap uh, techs are all down, except for Amazon is up a little, but all the rest of them are now down. In fact, Amazon just went, uh, no, Amazon, it's bouncing all around. Everything's around neutral. I mean, even Tesla is now starting back up again. So that's the kind, That's I think this is, you're seeing August here in the making. It's all over the place. Uh, I think it'll and and more or less flat. Uh, yeah, that's that's what I'm absolutely expecting. The Kathy Woods are all up this morning, though. That might be. I need to look at that harder. I'll try to remember and give you some reporting on that. This could be August could be the weird kind of month where the Kathy Woods stocks, all the the risky growth stocks, they might do better. It might be kind of a, a time when people are looking for something to invest in that isn't already up. OK, looking for some some of these stocks that have been beaten down that uh, look like they have high potential, but are maybe a little riskier. They might start being the ones that get some trading play. Um, and then let's look over here. Uh, so the uh, crypto is flat. Uh, the cash money is flat. Gold is up. I don't know what's going on with gold. Maybe somebody can tell me in the uh, comments below if you study and understand gold. Gold is now at 2009. It is up like 50, 60 points over the last week. I mean, a huge jump. Uh, oil is up again this morning, 81.60, up a dollar this morning. Bonds are now down a little bit, at least the 10-year. Uh, the two-month is down and the two-year is down. So the bonds are down a little bit this morning. That is good news. All right, so uh, that's where we stand. Uh, hit like. Please, if you like the morning report and hit subscribe, hit notify. Uh, I haven't lined up any of those guys yet, but I'm going to that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to line up the interviews this week. I think we'll be seeing all the all the regular players. Um, and uh, uh, so uh, hit notify so that you at least make sure you're notified about this show every morning and then um, buy the books. And now you can get the books for free audibles. You can get audio, the audio book from from uh, Amazon my audio version, all four have an audio version, and you get a book 
If you sign up for the five, you get two books. If you sign up for the 10, and you can even get, if you sign up for the 50, I'm going to give you an autographed copy of the hardback edition of the Elon Musk mission. And uh, so uh, that's all I got. It's been great talking to you.